Good morning. I'm going to start this morning with a quote. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. That's a quote by Theodore Roosevelt from a speech, and I became familiar with it as I have uh, looked into the research work of Dr. Brene Brown. She's a sociology researcher here in Houston and has spent a decade focused on shame and vulnerability and living wholeheartedly. And her work has confirmed some things that I have sort of picked up in the school of hard knocks over time, um, but that I think are... Uh, probably good for every human being I've ever met to, to know about. And um, what's great about it to me is that it's backed up by data, it's backed up by research. The quote, you know, is saying, hey, get out there. You're gonna get your butt kicked sometimes, but get out there, do it. What holds us back? Well, according to the work by Dr. Brown, essentially shame is what holds us back. And um, shame, is defined as the sense that we are so flawed that we don't deserve to be loved or to belong. Well, <laughs> humans are hardwired for loving and belonging. And so if you carry this fear with you daily that you're not enough, then you're going to be miserable and you're not going to take risks. You're not going to step out there. Uh, I have a lot of experience with this whole thing uh, over the last particularly... I would say eight years. Uh, there have been some things that I personally have walked through that have helped me learn this. Uh, but here's what I have to say to you. While it takes some courage initially to decide to do away with the facades, to be who you are, as your tribe comes around you, as the people who accept you for who you are start to show up in your life, life is actually way more comfortable because... The connections that you have are sincere. They're not covered over with some facade. The fear of being found out is irrelevant because you are being who you are. And so there is a, uh, it is living wholeheartedly. It is more comfortable. And, you know, uh, Dr. Brown coaches what she calls shame resiliency. And maybe we'll talk about that one in a couple of days or so. Um, of, of how to, when you have those burning feelings, uh, how to manage them and how to take control of them. Um, but also, again, I'm a big proponent of preparation. And so just being prepared that the haters going to hate. I mean, people are not going to like certain aspects and, and that's their prerogative. I mean, if you were having a political discussion, you would say, well, that's your, that, that's your right to have that opinion. So it's kind of the same way. You're not going to please all of the people all of the time. Um, but the people that you can please with your true, authentic self make for the best relationships. So have a good day. We'll see you next time.